Hey, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the Writer's Bookshelf. So last week I had kind of a sneak attack book, um, one I really wasn't planning on doing because I kind of forgot I had it. Um, not to say that you shouldn't get it, but it's just because I read it 15 years ago. Um, and if you've seen that video, you'll know that I teased this week's book as the one that I actually use now. So the reason why um, I don't use each, uh, Shoots and Leaves or even Strunk and White as much as I used to is because of this new one that I have I think is even better. Uh, it's more thorough. Um, I just like it more. And it's it's the one I remember I have. So, um, and also I think if you have one punctuation book, one's enough. It's punctuation. So if you're, if you're choosing between the three, then the one I'm going to show you today is the one I think you should have. But... If you are, um, if you really want to get good at writing, I would at least advise you to also get Elements of Style. Um, the Lynn Trust book, I think, is a good book to have um, for kind of like the broad strokes. And if you're the kind of reader who really hates dry writing, um, then the Lynn Trust book is the one for you because that's it's humorous. But if you if you just need a, a reference, um, the one I'm going to show you today is the one I think you should get. So that book today is unsurprisingly named the best punctuation book period by uh, June Casagrande and I'm recommending this book because it, it's the title it's true what the title says is true um, the reason is because it covers everything you know not to quote uh, Gary Ullman in the professional but it's everything it's Quotation marks. It's question marks. And they're like entire chapters. And you can even see on the side, there's little tabs there. Oh, I don't know. This camera I probably can't see. If I had a much better camera than what I'm showing you, you can hopefully see the little grooves. But that's like where all your chapters are. Um, oh, I see why you can't see them because they're all inside. But like you, you have charts, you know, by alphabet. alphabet and... Um, What's really good about this is before you even get to these charts here, and there's a lot of them, you'll see that if I flip through, there's a lot of these things. Um, in the front end, you have your explanation. Like you actually, it shows you like what every mark means and they give you plenty of examples. I would say, I mean, in English, you know, English is such a, a, a huge language with so many rules. I think it's impossible for any book to, to be this thin and cover everything there is to cover you would definitely need something a lot thicker if you're going to do every single type of example ever possible so there will be a few nuanced things like especially when you're like trying to combine hyphens with dialogue for example uh with a question mark attached stuff like that where it gets really complicated i mean that you're not going to find in there but when it comes to like just your common basic usage any question you have this book will answer it um I mean, literally, like, what did you want to learn how to use a uh, an ellipse? Well, I already showed you that. Do you want to learn how to use a single quotation mark? I mean, here you go. This is all the ways in which you use the single quotation mark, and then it explains it. And then, of course, it gives you a little example there over on this side, um, you know. And then, it, and then it goes right into the next one. Question marks, you know, the the um, how do you use a question mark properly? And I know your answer is, well, duh, you put it at the end of the sentence when you ask a question. Yeah, I know, no kidding, but um, what do you do with a question mark when it's inside a, a quotation? Do you put it on the inside or outside? Huh? Do you know the answer to that? If so, great. If not, there you go. So um, this book you're going to have to probably order online. I don't, this is not something that they keep stocked at the, um, in the bookshelves. In fact, it's got the little crease on here, which tells me that's probably been individually printed. Oh, 10 Speed Press. I think that's the same people who did um, Save the Cat, actually. <clears throat> so um, they're good. They're, they're another good one. Um, I usually review the Writer's Digest books, but 10 Speed's another good one. That's up and coming. Um, I didn't realize that that's who did this. Who did uh, Eat Streets and Leaves? Oh, Eat Streets and Leaves is Gotham. Yeah, I have all my books, though. I do this all in one sitting. But um, but the thing that's really good, too, about this Best Punctuation book is when you get to the, to the charts here, um, like, for example, they have Die Hard and not the movie, but they have the actual phrase. I don't know if you can see that um, right right there. You'll see that they give you a little example where it's, you know, they give you an example of how it's used. So 
um, you know, adjective usually um, hyphenated. An example is a diehard supporter, or underneath it, you have one without the hyphen, and that's uh, old habits die hard. So it gives you the example of when to use the hyphen and when not to, right? And then over here on the, can't do that. Um, by the way, it's appropriate that I picked die hard because when I'm recording this, it's still December and I have my, my Christmas glass of water. So, you know, Die Hard is a Christmas movie. Just saying. Um, yeah, so there's like these little buttons here. Well, maybe you can try to see it better over here. These, these little buttons, these, um, this is the color or the, the key here. Um, you have B and S and then um, I think A is the last one. Like, yeah, there's, there's one up here. It's got four. What those are is those are, are codes for um, MLA, APA, Chicago, and AP style. Uh, AP is the new style. Um, so they simplify it easier so that instead of Chicago, which you're going to forget, they say B for book. Um, instead of um, AP, they say N for news. Okay. Instead of um, uh, uh, APA, they use S for science. And then instead of MLA, they use A for academia. So, and I believe I got that right. Um, there, there's a section in the front about how to use the book, so you can always go back and, uh, yeah. Yeah, book for book editing, which is the Chicago, N for the uh, news, so that's Associated Press, S for science, so that's um, the APA, American Psychological Association, and A is for academia, which is for MLA. So if you are uh, in college and you want to write good essays, you know, that passed my criteria. Um, you'll want anything that has the letter A next to it because that's your MLA standard. Um, and then that's the other thing too is if you have a um, like write, uh, let's see if I can find an example here. Well, you're going to find like words like, okay, undercover uh, it has the letters B, N, and S, but there's no A next to it. Now, does that mean you can't use the word undercover in academia? I don't think so. I'm, I'm sure you could, but I think it just means that there's no standard for academia for that particular word, whereas uh, the other uh, standards do require a certain use of that word. So that becomes important like when you go into the abbreviations. Um, so here's an example here for zipline. Um, for zipline, you're going to notice that I have two different versions with different bubbles and that's again going to tell you that if you are writing zipline for your book make sure you use the one that's got uh the uh, the b next to it and um otherwise if you're writing for the for the newspaper use the one with the n next to it so and it's got an appendix for you so every good book has an appendix so this is where you're going to find your phrases your clauses uh sentence fragments and things um yeah, and just it's a, it's a good book. So, um, and it's cheap too. Like, there's a lot of um, textbooks out there for you know if you're in English classes, um, you can get a textbook for about thirty bucks. And again, it's thorough, but it's also limited to academia um, and or science. Whereas of this, you know, this is made for you know writers, people who want to sell books that are fun to read. And so, um, a book like that's really helpful to have. So I do encourage you guys. Um, that if you know and going back through my last three bonuses if you don't have a good grammar book you know pick up uh, elements of style pick up each truth and leaves pick up the best punctuation book period um any one of them is good i would say again the, the one i just showed you is my favorite of the three so if you're only going to pick one that's the one i would choose but um yeah they're, these are really excellent fallbacks to have when you're just not sure how to tell a sentence properly um, one thing I always tell my students, and I'll tell you guys too, if you're still watching, is that you can't have good writing until you have good sentences. So remember that the the sentence is the foundation of all writing. If your sentence structure is broken, your book will be broken. So you do need to make sure your sentence structure works. And so that's why grammar might be the last thing that we do um, when we go through and, and finalize our edits and our whatever we're writing. But it's also the thing we need to have stored up here so that we don't screw it up so badly that we have no idea what we're looking at when it does come time to review. So do your best. Like you, the thing with editing is you don't have to have like stellar sentences in your first draft, but you should have functional sentences. You should at least know what you're talking about. So this book, uh, if you get stuck along the way and you're like, I don't know where this hyphen goes or I'm not sure how to use a dash properly, 
these books will tell you. So uh, get one of them, but you know, get them all if you can. Um, I think it'll be helpful. So um, we are going to start season two. Uh, I've decided in the last video that we're going to start season two in the fourth week of March because uh, I want to give a little bit of a break between this episode and the one that's going to start the official second season. So it, my original plan was to do mid-March, but I think with these bonuses, it's going to push it back a little bit. So that's good because that'll give me more time to kind of figure out what I want for the season um, and also give me more time to read more books because um, I, the kind of books I want for season two, I'm quite frankly not caught up on. Uh, I have a bunch right behind this curtain here that uh, I want to get to, and a few of them are definitely good candidates for season two, but I can't comment on them until I've read them. So I got to give myself some time to read them. Um, and if for any reason you don't see it the fourth week of, of March, definitely by mid-April. If you don't see anything by mid-March, definitely be back by mid-April. We'll have something by then. And I will be starting with characters first. So I got a few character books to cover. I'll go from there. So I uh, hope uh, this series has been helping you out. And um, I hope you've been checking out some of the ones I've been recommending. Um, and do keep coming back. The, the more you come back, the more you like and subscribe and all that stuff, the more um, the more the series will keep going. Uh, I, I, I want to keep going. I, I like this series. I think it's useful. But I also want to have a reason to do it. And you have to watch the videos in order to and get and engage with the video. You know, make comments. Hit the like button. Let me know you're paying attention. Let me know I'm not wasting my time here. So keep that in mind. All right, so yeah, we'll be back uh, in the next week or two um, with, uh, we'll start our, we'll probably start with a character book, so um, we'll go from there. All right, take care, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.